Welcome everyone, my name is Zach, and today I'm going to be showing you how to modify the Fallout Shelter save file on iOS. This is something that I haven't seen in the tutorials online for that don't involve jailbreaking your iPhone or sideloading a bootlegged version of Fallout Shelter. This guide will be doing neither of those. We're going to be using an iPhone 15 Pro Max, fresh out of the box, and we're going to be using the authentic Bethesda Fallout Shelter from the App Store. Let's get started. Step one, we have to download iTunes, the latest version. Uh, first link you're going to see in the description of this video is a link to the download page for iTunes. You'll just follow that link and click download. Next, you're going to run the executable to install iTunes. You'll just follow the prompts in the wizard to install, leave everything as default. When attempting to open iTunes, if you encounter the error message seen on screen, click OK, and then search Apple Software Update. You're going to run this Apple Software Update. It takes a couple minutes for it to check. Uh, once it's successfully updated iTunes, just install one item here. Once it has successfully updated iTunes, you can open it and it should work that time. Now that you've successfully updated iTunes, you can go and open it for the first time. If for some reason the left pane here is missing a lot of features for you, that might be because you have the Apple Music Beta app installed. I don't know why this is, but for some reason the Apple Music Beta app and the iTunes app are incompatible on the same Windows machine. Uh, if you have Apple Music Beta, it will stifle pretty much all of the features iTunes has. To fix this, simply uninstall Apple Music Beta, close and reopen iTunes. With that out of the way, we can now plug in our iPhone to our computer. You may be prompted to trust this device. Keep an eye out. If you have a passcode, you might have to enter it on your phone. Uh, and once it has been plugged in, you should have an option up here to click on iPhone. You're going to go and click on that. And then you're going to scroll down. Make sure this computer is toggled. We're going to be performing a backup of your iPhone on this computer. Uh, once that's toggled, go and click backup now. You may again be prompted to enter a passcode on your device. I'm doing that myself. And then it will begin backing up your iPhone. Now this can take a uh, variable amount of time depending on how many files you have on your iPhone that need to be backed up. Uh, if you have 200 gigabytes of media, you know, photos and videos, it's going to take a while. Uh, I do recommend backing this up on a solid state drive, a faster uh form of storage because it will take a while. Um, for me it's going to take virtually no time at all because I'm backing up uh, virtually a, a fresh install of iOS with no media. Once iTunes has finished backing up your iPhone, the restore backup button should become available. Uh, at this point we can go ahead and close iTunes for now and what we're going to want to do is back up our backup because we are going to be modifying this backup and just in case we screw up at all throughout the next few steps, we want to be able to have an unmodified backup uh, to refer to. Um, so to do access this backup, you're going to go to your local disk where Windows is installed, users, your username, app data. If you don't see app data here, that's because you don't have it enabled to view hidden items. You can do so following the prompts that I'm just showing now. Uh, just make sure there's a check there and you should see app data half grayed out. Go and open that and then roaming, Apple computer, mobile sync, backup. And here, this serialized folder right here has our backup. We're gonna go and copy this to our desktop. Should only take me about a second here because it's not a very large backup. Um, you don't have to do this step. Uh, but if you don't want to lose everything on your iPhone because you've made a mistake on this step, uh, I recommend just backing up your backup uh, so you can have a fallback if you screw something up. Okay, on to the next step. We're going to open 
and download the iMazing software. I have the uh, placed as the second link in this description. So you're going to open that link and then download for Windows. Once it's finished downloading, you can go and run the executable. Jump through the wizard and say I accept. Default location for installation is fine. You can create a desktop shortcut. Once iMazing has finished installing, you're going to want to go and open it. Now this is a paid for service. Uh, it does require a license to use it in its fullest form. However, they do have a trial that we are going to use. Fortunately, with a little bit of finessing, we'll be able to do everything we need to do in this video without paying for the license, which I'm sure none of us want to do. You're going to click on backups and then you should see this archived backup here. This is what we just made. Uh, it's looking at the path uh, under the mobile sync folder. You're going to go and open this backup and then you're going to click on data and then you're going to click on apps. You may have to double click. Once it's loaded the apps, you'll scroll down and look for the Fallout Shelter app. Just double click that. And then you're going to want to copy the documents folder. You'll look if you look in the documents folder, you should see your vault save backup and the uh, vault one save or vault two save in this case as well. Um, you're going to go ahead and copy the entire documents folder to your PC. I recommend putting it in the downloads folder because we're not planning on keeping this. And it'll give you a warning saying you have a limited number of exports, 10 left. From my experience, uninstalling and reinstalling iMazing resets this. So if for some reason you have to keep retrying these steps and you run out of attempts, just reinstall it. should work for you. Uh, go and click continue. Once it's copied, we can open up File Explorer and go to Downloads. We see the Documents folder is right here with Vault 1. That's the one we're going to be modifying. Yep, there it is. The next step, I will show you how to actually modify the save. Okay, on this next step, we're going to be accessing the third link to the Fallout Shelter Save Editor. I don't take credit for this wonderful little service here. Uh, it's possible to modify your save if you just open up uh, an unencrypted version of the file. There are other uh, links online that you can use to do this. And you might even be able to modify certain things that this service does not offer. Uh, but this makes it a lot easier because the save file for Fallout Shelter is actually very lengthy. And scrolling through that looking for what to modify can be tedious. I recommend just using this service. Uh, you'll click Browse. You'll go to your Downloads folder, Documents, and then select the save file. It can be Vault 1 save, Vault 2 save, or Vault 3 save. You're going to open it, and here you can see you have a lot of options. You can choose to rename your vault. You can choose to change the amount of caps you have, the amount of Nuka-Cola Quantums you have, the amount of lunch boxes you have, out of Mr. Handy's, you have pet carriers and starter packs even. Normally you're limited to one starter pack per vault. Um, you can also change it from normal to survival. You can change the vault theme, which is actually really nice because now you don't have to wait for a certain time of the year. You can just manually make that change. Um, they have a series of functions here you can run. Remove all rocks, unlock all rooms, unlock all recipes max all dweller stats, max all dweller happiness. You can look through the rest of these. Uh, you can also modify certain dweller values here uh, if you have uh, certain dwellers that you want to modify. Uh, once you have made the desired changes, you can go ahead and click save. It should save it to your downloads folder by default. There it is. And in the next step, I will show you how to import this back into iMazing. 
All right, and now we're going to be porting this back into our iPhone backup using iMazing. So you're going to open iMazing, and you're already still on the Documents folder in all likelihood. So you're just going to go and open this now. You can go ahead and delete Vault 1 Save or whichever uh, file that you're modifying. And when you do this, it's going to attempt to have a safe backup editing feature. Uh, basically, it's going to create a duplicate of your iPhone backup uh, for your safety, just in case you make a mistake. You don't really have a choice in the matter, so go ahead and click continue. Fortunately, this shouldn't take too long. Uh, once you have done that, you're going to go ahead and close this and go to the editable backup. That's the one that we actually have the ability to make changes to. So we're going to go back to that same location, data, apps. Scroll down and select Fallout Shelter, Documents. Go ahead and delete your file, Vault1.save. Uh, vault and then make sure you've not selected any files. Just click on the white blankness over here. You're going to click Copy to Device. going to click file then you click downloads and you're going to select your vault save and here again it's going to prompt you to pay for the license you're going to click continue and you'll see the vault one save is showing up right here now that we have imported the vault save that we've modified back into iMazing we want to export the entire uh, backup to our iPhone. Now if we try to do this using iMazing it is going to prompt us to pay for the license and this is not something that we can just continue to do with the trial. If we just demonstrate that real quick. Click on tools and restore to device. You'd select your iPhone, next, next, restore and it gives us this pop-up to pay for the license and we don't have a choice to continue with the trial unless we do a little bit of trickery as you may recall iTunes has the feature to restore there's no need for us to use iAmazing we just need to move the modified folder of our backup into our iTunes uh, directory so we're gonna go and open up this PC your local disk users your username app data roaming Apple computer, mobile sync, backup, and you'll see iMazing.versions is here. Uh, because we have backed up our iPhone backup to our desktop in one of the previous steps, we can go ahead and delete this. We want to do that. And then we're going to open up iMazing versions, blueprints, and we're going to copy this right here, this folder. Go backspace several times until we get to yeah mobile sync backup and right here we're gonna paste this right here and lastly we are gonna open up iTunes make sure again this computer is selected and click restore backup should give you the option to select your iPhone and then you click restore. I'm not going to do this because I don't actually want to restore again. Um, again this will take quite a while if you have a large amount of files to restore. Um, what I recommend doing if you want to really speed things up if you do this a lot to continuously modify your save uh, have a backup of all your photos and just run your iPhone with minimal photos so the backup doesn't take long. Uh, and what you can actually do is save your save file to the cloud, the iCloud. So that way, once you restore your original backup with all of your photos and videos and other large uh, files, uh, you don't have to modify that uh, backup necessarily. You can just modify a much smaller backup and then 
add that save file to the iCloud once you have it on an Apple device. That said, thank you everyone for watching. If you encounter any difficulties, please leave a comment. I'll attempt to help you out. Uh, that said, good luck. Get out there and defend your dwellers.